Well, good morning and welcome to Barrel Life Church. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, are you excited to be here? I'm excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here. We want to welcome also our campuses. We are one church in three locations. They're in Ashland and Grayson. Guys, thank you so much for joining and worshiping with us today. Man, I'm excited about this series. Hopefully last week that God really encouraged you to jump into his word. And this week you follow along with us in our reading plan. And uh, maybe you know, the very first time you open up the scriptures or maybe for the first time some of you, you listen to the scripture as you drove to work or on your break or whatever it may be. But the reality is to get in God's word. And if you missed last week, we talked about the importance of that. So please go back and check that out. And today as we continue in this series called Foundations, you know, there, there's one thing in the scripture that always caught me by surprise. Well, there's lots of things that catch me by surprise. But one thing, is that the disciples who walked with Jesus, I'm talking three years, elbow to elbow, watched everything he did, could ask him for anything to teach them how to do anything, and they did. They made one request to him. Now, if that was you, what would you have, taught, what would you have asked Jesus to teach you to do? Like, so you say, hey, Jesus, listen, you know, I'm always hungry, I got, a lot of, I got a big family, so how in the world did you just take that bread and multiply it, bro? Can you help me out here? Like, teach me how to multiply bread so I can feed my family. That would be pretty cool, right? You know, or, or you know, for some of you, like, Jesus walked on water. That would be cool at any pool party, wouldn't it? Like, any pool party, they would always ask you to come over. Like, Jesus, how'd you walk on water? Teach us how to do that. And the Bible tells us that they had a chance to ask Jesus, and you know what they asked? The only thing that we found recorded they asked, teach us to do is to pray. Out of everything they could have asked Jesus to do, they says, listen, there's something special, there's something unique when you get before God and you pray to our Heavenly Father. Teach us to pray the way you pray because when you pray, things happen. When you pray, like the heavens open and God begins to move. So I have all these great things you've done. They raised, he raised the dead. He walked on water. He, he multiplied, you know, uh, the bread and the fish. Like, but Lord, teach us to pray. And so if the disciples asked that who walked with Jesus, what is it that Jesus wants us to learn about prayer? Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about prayer. A lot of people think prayer things like God's like a genie. You only ask him when you need something, right? God, I need you to do this. Show up and do it. So he's like, at your command, whatever you wish, I will do that. A lot of people treat him like a genie. A lot of times we treat it like a spare tire, right? We only get it out when we have a blowout, right? When things happen or go bad in our life or crazy in our life or report from the doctor or things are going at home well or at work well, then we request or we begin to pray. Like at the worst times, we begin to focus on prayer. But there's some things about prayer that I believe if we could just understand and tap in why do we pray and, and how do we pray and when do we pray, I really believe it could set some of you free because a lot of times prayer becomes, well, just kind of boring thing we do. It's just like a religious ritual that you do. And now you become into a rut, you memorize the same phrases and you say the same thing every time you pray and there's one word for that boring, okay? And so we don't want a boring prayer life. We don't want us to memorize statements and we always tag that statement on the end and tag that statement on the end, right? I mean, in the beginning, and, and, and listen, and, and that's you, it's okay, because we, we, we repeat what we were told to pray. Like when you were raised up and you were growing up and you go to you know the, the prayer meetings, you heard certain things to pray and that's how you learn how to pray and that's what you pray. And, and, for, and for some people, you go over somebody's house or you went to a, a good old, you know, fashion, you know, uh, food fest at the church and some way and they prayed, Lord, bless the hands that prepare it. Now, why not the heart? The heart's what it really came from, right? Why the hands? Why not something else? So, but pray, just bless their hands. Nothing else about them, just their hands. And so we say, God, bless the hands. Okay, but that's another whole thing if you pray. And, and so there's not a right way or a wrong way per se to pray, but there's a lot of things that, that Jesus talked about prayer in the Bible. He says, don't try to impress people with your elegant words because prayer at the end of the day is just talking to God. It's communicating with God. And so many people, a lot of times, if you called on them or asked them to pray, and I'm not gonna call on you, ask you to pray. Man, I'll never forget that, right? I, 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 listen, I, I wasn't raised in church, and, but I, when, I, when I gave my life to Jesus, I started going to church. I was 21 years old, or actually 20 years old, and I'll never forget that I didn't know that at the end of the service that the pastor would point you out and call on someone to pray. You, anybody ever been to a church service like that when you leave the church service, right? Okay, well, I was sitting there one day, and I was sitting there, mind my business, talking to him, and the pastor said, hey, Daniel, I want you to pray. I actually didn't call me Daniel, call me Vinny. That's my name. He said, because there ain't nobody else named Vinny in the room. I'll tell you that right now. He said, Vinny, pray. I'm like, out loud? Like in front of everybody? 
Like we talk about just got saved. Like we mean pray. Like, oh, oh man, I was like, oh gosh. And I was like, what, what do I say? What do I pray? He called on me to pray. And there's a hundred people sitting here. And I don't even know what I prayed, but I'm sure it was horrible because I was like so scared. Because I didn't know. Is that just caught me off guard that you did? But most people are like, man, I don't know what to say. Well, what would you say to God if you had a chance to talk to him? Talk to him. And that's what I love about God is that he sent his son to give us, we talked about last week, boldness to enter into his presence. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be scared. We don't have to run and hide. We can get in and talk to God. In fact, what I've learned over, you know, since I've been saved as, as a 20-year-old up to today, for the last 24 years of my life, or actually 25 years of my life, I just learned that prayer is nothing but a conversation with God. And it's not a conversation, watch this, that I start and basically I stop. It's an open-ended I pray all through the day, conversational prayer, pray when I drive to work, pray when I'm driving home, pray when I'm going somewhere, pray before I get up on stage. So it's a conversation I just keep having with God, just like I have with you. And so I wanna encourage you that before today's over with, that you will see prayer a little bit differently and that you will begin to pray. And watch this, and not only when you're in trouble, not only when things go bad, but even in the good times that you begin to have a conversation with God. So here's what I'm focusing on today. When do I pray? Why do I even pray, and how do I pray? That's what we're gonna cover this morning. So hopefully, hopefully the Lord will use this to speak into your life. I know he has in my own life, and so I just wanna walk you through a little bit of this of, of some things like when do we pray? Because prayer is nothing but simply just communicating with God, and a lot of people don't pray because you don't think God's interested in you. Like, he's like, God is not concerned about my family. God's not concerned about my health. He's not concerned about my back pain. You know, God's not concerned about my, you know, my, my parenting or my finances. So we like, we don't wanna bother God, right? Like, we don't wanna, we don't wanna just go to him unless we just have no choice. And then all of a sudden, here's what we do. When things, hit the, hit the, hit the, things happen badly, we say, well, all that we could do now is pray. Listen to me. That's all you could have done in the first place. So don't wait to prayer is the last thing to do. It's the first thing. You don't have to get on Facebook and ask everybody what they think first. You go to God. Like you talk to him. Like get before him. And, 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 and we're gonna learn about a little bit about that today because he really wants to communicate and connect with you. So first question is when should I pray? Well, this one's very easy. When should I pray? Watch this. Now. Like all the time. All things, everything, in all things, the Bible says never cease to stop to pray. You don't have to wait till you get a bad report. You don't have to wait when things, in fact, that's usually when we pray, but we really don't talk to God in the good times. Like, and things are going well in your life. You ever stop and say, God, I just can't believe things are just going so well. Thank you for, for allowing this. Thank you for all this. Thank you that, you know. Like, have you ever just talked to God in a communication form? Like, just have a conversation. Like, because listen, and then I'm, I'm not picking on you. Please don't, don't be, I'm not trying to offend you or pick on you. But a lot of times, we were, if you were raised around certain prayer groups or prayer meetings, you, 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 you've learned that you've gotta change the tone of your voice when you pray, and you gotta big, use like big godly words when you pray. And I'm like, you don't talk like that anywhere else, right? Like, you don't ever talk like that anywhere else. Like, when you go and have a conversation, you don't sound like that. But all of a sudden when you pray, everything changes. The tone changes and, you, and all of a sudden the posture changes and you and like, no, 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 God just wants you to be you. Don't have to be a fake, don't have to be false, don't have to be somebody else. He wants you to be you. So when do you pray? I think all times. You never stop. You can pray before you get out of bed and say, God, listen, today's gonna be a crazy day, a hard day, a good day, a bad day. I've got this meeting and that meeting. You already know, and, and I'm already tired, and I just need you to help me to control my tongue, help me to control my emotions, and I, I can't do this without you. And so, Lord, today, before I even get out of bed, I'm just gonna let you know I need you. And then go on. And then as you're going to work, like, it's a conversation. It's not so much just a one set. Now, I think there's times you have set times where you get before God and you pray, but God just wants you to communicate with him and talk with him. And so that one's really easy, when should I pray? But here, here, here's the question, why? Why do I even pray? If, watch, if God, and I believe this, God knows all things. God knows the beginning and the end, he knows when I was born, he knows my last breath. There's a lot of people, well not a lot of people, a handful of people, they teach this open theism, which means the, the future is open and God does not know the future and he doesn't understand when things are gonna happen, which is just heresy, by the way, according to the scriptures, that's completely false. And, and so someone would teach that, that God doesn't know the future and all that. God knows the beginning and the end, he knows all things. So if God already knows what's gonna happen, then why even pray? If God already knows that person is gonna pass away, why pray and ask God to save them? If God already knows I'm gonna get that job, why even pray and ask for a job because he already knows what I'm gonna do anyway? 
right? It's a good question. It's like, why would I even pray? Why, why does someone get before God and pray when he already knows all things and everything's gonna happen the way God orchestrated and all, all things is gonna be exactly in his plan and how he organized it? Yes, God gives us free will, gives us choice, but God is sovereign. He has ordained the days of my life. He's already planned, the, the scripture says, my days of my life. So why do I pray? Well, if prayer is communicating with God, God wants us to pray, one, is so that we have fellowship with him, so we would communicate with him, but this is one of the biggest reasons why I wanna encourage you to begin to pray if you don't pray. It shows dependency upon God. Listen to me. When you do not pray, here's what you're saying. God, I don't need you. I can do this without you. I can lead my family without you. I can run my business without you. I can take care of my finances without you. I can parent without you. I can do my job without you. If there's problems that happens, then I will come to you. When you don't pray, here's what you're saying, God, I don't need you, which is arrogant, which is prideful, which is saying, God, I don't depend upon you. And when you actually begin to depend on God and you humble yourself, James says that he will build you up. James says that he will protect you. All these promises that we find in the scripture. And so the number one reason, we're not number one, one of the biggest reasons why we pray is it shows that, God, I can't do this without you. And when you don't pray, here's what you're saying to God, God, I don't need you. Jesus writes, Jesus actually says in John 15, five, he says, yes, I'm the vine, you're the branches, right? Remember, we stay connected to the vine. This is another whole sermon. Those who remain in me and I in them, if you stay connected with me and fellowship with me, will produce much fruit, your, your life will produce fruit in your life, for apart from me, you can do nothing. And so many of us trying to do so many things apart from God. Prayer is a sign that God, I need you. I depend on, in the good times and the bad times. When life is going good, marriage is going good, kids are going good, finances, finances are going good, everything's going good, that's even the greatest time I need to get before God and say, God, listen, because I know there's a valley down the road and I'm gonna make sure I'm staying and dependent upon you because without you, I can't do it in the good times and I definitely can't do them in the bad times. Prayer is the most tangible, practical demonstration of dependency upon God. Prayer is the most practical, tangible act of dependency upon God is that when you pray, when you pray, and I wanna encourage you that today, no matter where you come from, how your background, how you pray, that today you'll begin to have conversations with God. Well, I don't know what to say, talk to him. Well, I just feel bad and feel guilty. That's the devil, we'll talk about that just in a moment. God wants you to have a conversation with him. So one, it, it shows I depend upon him. Two, it lightens my load. It lightens my load. So many people carry this, that carry burdens. We all, I talk to our staff about this. There's, there's burdens that we carry that some we chose ourselves, some that we worry about. Then there's the ministry burden that God puts upon those, who, like when you, when you carry out the ministry of God that he's called you to do. But I'm gonna talk about when you carry things around, I'm carrying work problems, I'm carrying marital problems, I'm carrying finance problems, I'm carrying my kids' problems, I'm carrying my friends' problems, I, carry all, I got the problems of the world. Like I got all this worry on me. Jesus says, listen, when you come to me and talk to me and you, 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 you talk to me, guess what happens? I begin to lighten your load. You begin to give that to me and let me carry it. You're not meant to carry that. Let me carry it. But when we don't pray, here's what we're saying. God, I can do it without you. I can carry this without you. And you're wondering why you're crushed. You're wondering why you're, why you're beat down. You're wondering why you're, you're stressed out or you're worried or you're anxious. You're trying to carry something that you're not meant to carry. Prayer is a sign to get before God and say, God, I'm gonna give it to you. I don't understand it all, I don't know how to control it all, I can't fix it all, but you can, and I'm just gonna give this to you, and I'm gonna trust that you, as I depend upon you, you will work this out. So God, I'm gonna give you my life, I'm gonna give you my work, I'm gonna give you my career, I'm gonna give you my education, I'm gonna give you my marriage, I'm gonna give you my children, I'm gonna give you my funds, I'm gonna give you my job, I'm gonna give you my pets because they're driving me crazy right now. Can I get a witness, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm gonna give you everything. Like, and God's like, that's what I've been waiting on. Just let me have it. But we try to be God. We think we are God and we can do it without him. But when we pray, it's a sign of dependency and it begins to lighten our load. God longs for you to say, God, I can't do this. Please take this. And he goes, finally, finally, I got you to the point where you're about to break for you say, I need you, depend upon me. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, come to me all you are who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and watch this, I'm gonna give you rest, I'm gonna give you peace, I'm gonna help you if you'll just come to me. But we believe the lives of the devil and we won't approach God and we won't talk to him because we think he's far off, we think he doesn't care, he's got bigger things to worry about, he's not interested in me and that's all a lie straight from the pit of hell. 
and we're wondering why we're stressed out. Prayer is a way to begin to release that. Prayer is a way that you begin to show your strength. Believers find their strength, watch this, on their knees. And when we get on our knees, that's when we, begin, we become strong. It's because it shows that we are dependent upon him. God likes it when you say, God, here's everything. Here's my family, you take it all. Here's my career, here's my life. He's waiting for that. Here's another reason, why? Why do we pray? And this was a big one. It releases God's power in my life. You want the power of God to flow through your life, then you need to get on your knees and, or you need to have a conversation with God. And you don't have to get on your knees if you're driving. That'd be awkward and weird. I don't know how you do it anyway when you're driving to work. But anyway, listen, you need to have a conversation with God because it begins to release God's power. Nothing releases God's power in your life than prayer. When you begin to pray by faith, feelings don't move God, faith moves God. Some of you need that. If you think you can feel your way, feelings is not what moves God. How you feel doesn't move God. It's your faith that moves God. And you want God to be released in your life and you want his power to be released in your life, listen, then you need to pray. James says this in James 5, verse 16. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power, watch this, and produces wonderful results. When you pray, prayer can do what only God can do. You want to unleash God in your life? Begin to pray. You want to see, you want to tap into the very resources of God? Watch this, begin to pray. And we believe all these lies from the devil that God's not concerned about us or, or that God you know, won't answer my prayer because I've I done something wrong. He doesn't know my, my past or I feel dirty, I feel guilty or whatever and I, I feel like I, shouldn't, I can't approach God. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but so many people feel like I just I don't know if I can approach him because I think he's upset at me. I think he's mad at me. I think he's disappointed in me. Therefore, I don't talk to him. Folks, that's a lie from the devil. He wants to have a conversation. He wants to talk with you. Don't let the enemy rob you from your dependency upon him and from your joy that's found in prayer. So when should I pray? We should pray all the time. Never stop, all the time. All the time we should have conversations, all the time. Why should I pray? We talked about this, it's gonna light my load, it shows my dependency upon God and it releases God's power in my life. And I know you want that. Then why don't we pray? And then here's the last question. It says, how should I pray? Now, let's get into the practicals. How should I do? What are some things I do when I, when I start to pray, right? Because I don't know where to start, and, and no, I, I don't know, and, and I'm not making fun. No, it's okay, right? Where do I begin when it comes to pray? And maybe you've got this figured out, and you're one of the prayer warriors, and you, you know, you've bumped into prayer warriors, haven't you? You, when, you know that you bumped into a prayer warrior when you're sitting here at Kroger, and you're shopping, and you talk to someone, and you say, hey, I want you to pray for me because I got this job interview, and they say, okay, let's pray right now, dear Lord, and they go right into it in the middle of Kroger, and you're like, okay, I, I didn't mean now. You know, you could pray in silent at home, like you want right now, and, and, I, and, and they're a prayer warrior. And, and there's sometimes that happens in request. And there's sometimes, though, that's this, this, the Lord just put in your heart. Like I've, you meet somebody and they're talking to them and say, hey, pray for me. I got surgery coming up tomorrow. Pray for me. I'm sick. And in those moments, you know what? Let's pray right now. You know, and there's nothing. Let's pray right now. Let's ask God to be that. Or, or, or if you're in a hurry, you got to go and say, listen, you know what? I'm going to pray. As soon as we walk away from you, I'm going to begin to pray and I'm going to talk to God about helping you in your circumstances. And as you're going down through aisle 13, looking for cookies, come on now, don't judge me. You begin to pray for them. Lord bless them. Help them. Whatever it may be. If you, watch it. We tell people we pray for them and then we always forget we never pray for them. Hey, pray for so and so. We say, praying in our text message real quick. And you didn't pray good intentions, I'll get to it, but here's what, here's what I'm gonna encourage you. When you tell somebody to pray, pray instantly, pray right now, and if you don't pray out loud for them right now, pray at that moment, so as soon as they walk away, say, God, help them tomorrow as they go to surgery. God, pray for their family that is sick. God, I hope they get that job and pray that that's what your will for your life. Begin to pray. If you tell somebody you're gonna pray, pray for them right then, either on the spot out loud or when they walk away. I've learned that's what I do. I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm, there's not a scripture for that, but I'm just saying I would encourage you, if you tell somebody you're gonna pray for them, begin to pray for them right now. So how should we pray? So the key question that I want you to ask yourself when you're praying is this. Why should God answer my prayer that I'm praying for right now? Why should God answer this? Think about the prayer request that you ask God. Why should God answer that prayer? Why should he answer that? And then you wanna ask, why should I ask God to answer this prayer? Why? Why? And you may ask, well, why do you ask those questions? Because at the end of the day, God looks at the motives of the heart. And it's the motives of the heart that God looks at and judges and he sees. And so when we begin to pray, watch this, with a pure heart and a pure motive, 
It's amazing to see what God does in our life. And I said this last week, some of the hardest prayers to pray in your life are prayers that bless you and your family, that benefit you and your family. And I shared with you that when I, in my own life, here's what I do, but I get to, when there's an opportunity that comes my way that may bless me or my family or help me and my family, how do I pray that and not be a self? If a job opportunity comes your way and you get 10 more thousand dollars a year and you know you got a kid going to college and you're like, man, I really need that, man, it's really gonna help it. How do you say, God, can I get that job? Because you know it pays more money. There's anything wrong making money? No, is anything wrong making more money? No, but is that what God, is that the place that God wants you? Or are we distracted because the opportunity has more to give than here and surely God wants me to have more? You see there, that motive check, that motive, and, we, and sometimes we get blinded by that. A lot of times you'll see a lot of young people, you know, I see it today, you got 14-year-olds going, I love you. You don't even know what love is, man. What are you talking about? I'll, how long have you been dating? Two weeks and three days, but I love him. Like, you're crazy, girl. Like, you don't even know what love is. You're 14 years old, right? Like, what are you talking about? But I love him. Like, okay, that's another whole sermon. We'll, we'll talk about that later. And, and, and so what happens, we get blinded by ambition, or we get blinded by something better, and we may miss God's opportunity in our life. So how do I pray that and, not, and want a pure heart? And so when you get before God, you say, God, here's, here's what I say. I say, God, you know my heart and my heart will lie to me. And as best as I'm praying right now, you know my heart and you know my motives. And I pray right now, I'm praying with the purest heart and motives. If it is not from you or your will, then I don't want it. And when you get before God with a pure heart and pure motives, God begins to do amazing things in your life. And watch this, that's available to every single one of us, at every single one of us. So real quickly, some practical steps. When it comes to prayer, what can I do? The first thing I would encourage you to do is just to give God praise. It's very simple, right, very basic. This is not profound, you know how to do this. It's to give God praise. God wants us to enter in his, his courts with thanksgiving and praise on our heart. He want, we should enter, first of all, if we're doing that, it's just praise God for who he is and what he's done. And Psalms 104, it says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. That's why a lot of times you start out or I'll start to say, God, you are faithful, you are great, you're wonderful, you're awesome, you're good. And when I talk about God, you're being great, I'm talking about his position because he is the king of my life, he's the Lord of my life, but he's, the, he's my heavenly father, so I'm talking about his position. God, you're awesome, I'm, that means I'm gonna talk about your power, you can do anything, you can move anything, you can do anything, it, nothing's too short for you to accomplish and do. And God, I'm gonna talk about this in a moment, you keep your promises, which means God is a covenant God and God cannot lie. And God, I know you're gonna do things for your glory and, for, and, and, and what you think will benefit me and my family for your will, and God, whatever that is, that's what I want. You see, when you acknowledge who God is, that's where praise begins. That says, God, you are bigger than my problem, and I've got a problem that I may be bringing before you, but you're bigger, and you're greater, and you can fix anything. No, there's not one single mess that you can't handle. So God, I wanna come before you. And what happens is, your praise now will be bigger than your problem. See, when you begin to praise God, your praise becomes bigger than the problem that you're facing because you can see God can do it. God can heal you, God can fix that, God can move that, God can bring that wayward care home, God can break that addiction, God can help me financially. There's nothing too short that God can't do. And when my praise becomes bigger than my problem, my perspective begins to change. The Bible says that the angels worship and praise God 24 seven. And I'm telling you what, we should not allow one single angel out praise us. And you would say, how come? Because they have not tasted salvation. They have not been delivered from their sin. And every single person who followed Jesus has been delivered of their sin should shout praises upon praises upon praises. Because you know what, we deserved hell. But God in his goodness and his glory sent his son to die for us and save us while we were yet sinners. And if we put our faith and trust in him, we get to spend eternity for him. That should bring praise no matter what happens in our life. And so we shouldn't let the heavenlies outpraise us because they have not tasted the salvation of God. And if you've tasted salvation, then no matter what you face on earth, we should give him praise. And so when we praise him, watch this, it begins to change our perspective. Actually, it begins to change you. So that prayer is not to get God on your agenda, it's to move you on God's agenda to sit your heart and say, God, my perspective's on you, and I see that the world, the things of the world may grow strangely dim, and the light of your glory, that's what happens when we begin to praise God. Our perspective begins to change. Here's the second thing, is that this, 
There needs to be confession. If there's sin in your life, confess the sin that might happen in your life. Now, you heard me talk about this. We, we confess the sins. I talk about when I confess sins, not, watch this, not for my relationship. God is my father. Now, if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, when you confess your sins, you're now, sins, you're now adopted into the family. But I confess my sins to restore this fellowship with God. I love the verse in 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins, and watch this, and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Now, we don't see this in the English text here, but in the original language, that, that word cleanse, it's a present tense active verb, which means it's present, active, constantly cleansing us. Here's what that means. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all the sins because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sin. And that verse is a beautiful picture of the constant cleansing, present, active blood of Jesus cleansing those who trust and follow after him. What a wonderful verse when we look at, when we blow it, because let me tell you what, as a believer, you're gonna blow it. As a Christian, you're gonna blow it. In fact, some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life claim to be Christians. You're gonna blow it. And you're gonna make mistakes. And even though you're saved, and even though you're going to heaven, you're gonna make mistakes. So I confess, watch this, to restore that fellowship that's been broken. Sin breaks fellowship. And if I wanna commune with God, listen, if you have active, unconfessed sin in your life, no wonder you don't wanna to talk to God about it. Fellowship was, in fact, if you want to run and hide and you feel guilty, like you don't wanna get around God or talk to God because you know what you've done, that's the devil pointing out, trying to make you feel guilty because listen, as a child of God, it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. The Holy Spirit draws us and when he draws us, listen, we don't care if God knows. Watch this, you ready for this? Because he already knows. You think about that. Well, I don't know, God. I, he already knows. So why don't you just talk to him? God, I blew it. I said it again. I thought it again. I looked at it again. I drunk it again. I smoked it again. I tried it again. Like, what is it? Like, he already knows. Why are you trying to hide it? Why are you trying to run from it? So God, it's me again. I need you. I can't do this without you. I can't break this problem or whatever it is without you. You need to confess your sins. And I said this, to stay clean and close. I said a lot about this last week. You wanna stay clean and close to Jesus. You'll never get to the point, and there's a teaching out there and says that, hey, to come to the point, you become sinless. You, there's never gonna be a point while you're here on earth that you'll become sinless. But there can be a point in your life where you begin to sin less because you're aware of the tactics and the lies of the enemy you're more alert of the spirit and the temptations that's around you. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks, the temptation, how to handle that. And therefore, I can walk in victory over sin. You already got the power to do that. And so, but when you blow it, rapid repentance, confess it. Here's the third thing that a lot of people miss on this one, and that is that we need to claim the promises of God when we pray. You need to claim what God's word has already promised. There's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. That's like 7,000 blank checks waiting to be cashed but we don't cash them. You know why we don't cash in on the promises of God? I'm not being mean about it, it's because we don't know them. We don't get in God's word to know what he's promised us. And all the promises of God that he's given to us are yes and amen. In fact, Paul writes about this in 2 Corinthians 1. He says, for all of God's promises that have been fulfilled in Christ, which is a resounding yes, and all through Christ are amen. What he's saying, all the promises of God are yes, all the promises will we'll bring glory to God and all the promises that he has given us is available. He says, if you confess, I will forgive. If you confess, I will cleanse. That's a promise from God. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That's a promise of God. That means no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you said, what you've tried, what you come from, I don't care how many times you've been married, I don't care how many times you've been in rehab, I don't care how many times you've done anything in life, I don't care how many times you looked at porn, I don't care how many times you blew it before. He says, watch this, if you'll confess me as Lord, I will forgive you and I will save you and I will sanctify you and I can set your feet and make you a brand new person. That is the promise of God. And people will not give their life to the Lord because they believe a lie of the devil that God will never forgive them, they'll never be good enough, and that, that their sin outweighs what God did on the cross. That's a promise waiting for you to claim today. There's promises all through these scriptures. If there's some that are unconditional and there's some that are conditional. There's conditional, when you see the word if in the Bible, that's a condition. If you, I will. Those are unconditional 
I mean, there's are conditional promises, but then there's tons of unconditional promises that are given to me. I am, I am secured in Christ Jesus. That is an unconditional promise. I have been secured with the Holy Spirit, a guarantee, Ephesians 1 says, a deposit guaranteeing my inheritance. God has guaranteed me inheritance. That's a promise that God cannot lie and will not break. That's an unconditional. There's a lot of conditionals. If you, I will. If you do this, then I will do that. And most of us will not claim the promises of God. The reality is not being mean. It's because, and including myself, we're ignorant of them. We don't know them because we don't get in God's word to discover them. Does God need to be reminded of his promises? No. He knows them. Will he forget what he promised? No. So why do we do this? Because it helps me to remember what God has promised. It helps me to remember, God, what you said is true. Because the secret of an effective prayer life is knowing and claiming the promises of God in his word. Because it's the prayer, watch this, because prayer transforms God's promises into action. Prayer transforms God's promises into performance, into action. It moves it. When we claim the promise, God, this is, and there's times, God, you have said in your word, and I'll, I'll, I claim that promise today. You said, if I, you will, and God, I, here, here's me doing the if. If you will humble yourself, he says, I will lift you up. If you build yourself up, boy, I will tear you down. God hates pride. The devil became the devil because of pride. So James says, if you'll humble yourself, that's a choice, that's a condition. If you, I will. If you humble, I will build you up. I will lift you up. That is a choice that every single one of us can make. We see this all the way through the scripture. And I wanna encourage you to start claiming God's promises. If you don't know them, start to research the promises of God and then add them to your prayer life. God, you tell me if I make you, if I make you my rock, my refuge, my shelter, my hiding place, Psalms 91, that you will hide me in your kanaf, which is, kanaf is the corner of your wings, and you will overshadow me, and you will protect me if I make you my refuge, my rock, and my shelter, and my fortress. You have a choice to do that every single day of your life. And God says, if you choose to do that, I will protect you under the, my wing. You see these promises, and we leave them on the table. I like to say, it's all these blank checks that we will not cash in on the promises of God that he has promised his children. Why? Because we don't know them. So I'm gonna encourage you to start adding God's promises to your prayer life, because the strength of your prayer life will be determined how well you know these promises of God. And then lastly, when it comes to some application, how do you do this? I wanna encourage you, be specific in what you ask for. Be specific in what you ask for. A lot of times we pray general. God bless me. And what? God help me. With what? Be specific. God heal me. From what? Be specific in your request. And by doing it, there's so many benefits to that. One, you know what when God answers it, because it's specific. It will build your faith when you see God specifically. Like my wife, she prays specifically. God, I lost the keys again. Where are they? And she finds them instantly. God, help me do this. And it happens to her instantly. And so now the thing in our house going, Mom, have you seen my phone? Mom, have you seen my speaker? No. Have you prayed about it? <laughs> no, Mom. God, help me find my speaker. Oh, there it is. Like, thanks, Mom. Prayer works. Seriously. But watch this. Watch this. And then I come home and she goes, isn't God so good? It's like, what do you mean? Well, I was praying that I could find my favorite pen. I <laughs> wasn't a pen, give you an example, a pen. And I found it. Isn't God so good? I'm like, that gets you all jacked up? Like, God, you found your pen? Like, what are you talking about? It's not that she found it, it's that God specifically answered the prayer. When you get specific, it will build your faith. Because now you know God came through with that specific prayer. Not just generic, not general. God bless everyone, God help everybody. No, help them. Get specific with it and see what God, 
there's, there's a story in the scripture. And I don't wanna take this out of context, but there's a story in the scripture. It was a man who was blind and Jesus walking through. And Jesus asked this guy, as if Jesus didn't already know. He goes, what do you want me to do? Watch this, it's Mark chapter 10 and verse 51. Look what he says. Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? It's like Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? How do you want me to lead you? What, what, what can I help you with? So you only wanna get me out when there's a blowout or a problem. But I wanna help you in every area of your life. I wanna help you. You wanna be a better organizer? Let me help you. You wanna get disciplined? Let me help you work on discipline. Talk to me about it. You want some more patience because you, you're not really a patient person? Listen, I'm the one you need to come to. What can I do for you? What do you want from me? How can I help you? And of course, the blind man, he gets specific. He says, rabbi, because remember, Jesus is a rabbi as well. He says to the blind man, he says, I want to see. Duh. I've been blind my whole life. I want to see. See, Jesus already knew what he wanted. But Jesus wanted him to request it specifically. Jesus knows everything you need, and he knows everything you want. And the want comes when our motives become pure. Why are you asking me for that? Unpack that motive. Get to the point where you're doing it with the purest heart you can pray. Because I think if we sift through a lot of things, we realize a lot of things we want are selfish, selfish gains for other reasons. So what other people may think, get specific. Look at your motives. And when you do, I'm telling you, God will show up in an unbelievable way. Unbelievable way. So let's recap here. When do I pray? Now. Why? It shows my dependency on the Lord. It, show, it, it lightens my load. It releases God's power in my life. How do I pray? There's multiple ways. There's not a right or wrong way. I'm gonna give you some tangible things you could do. Start out by giving God praise for who he is. If there's sin in your life, confess it. If there's nothing between you and the Lord at that time, move on to claim his promises. God, this is what you promised. Thank you for your promises, your description. You're a covenant-keeping God, and you cannot lie. And you I said, you will do this if I claim the promises of God. And then be specific with your request. Be specific. Share with him exactly. And I'm telling you what, if you'll begin to have a conversation, this, this right here will begin to transform your prayer life. And some of you, you never prayed before or you really don't know how, so here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you if you would just to bow your head. And at all of our campuses, Ashley and Grayson, everywhere right now, here's what I want you to do. Would you just right now practice what we do? Would you right now just have a conversation with God? I, whatever you wanna talk to him right now, what is it? I'm asking every single one, just to have a conversation with him. For some of you, it may be the first time. Some of you may be really awkward because you just haven't talked to God in a long time and you don't know what to say. To say, hey God, it's me. <laughs> okay, I don't know what to say. For some reason, I just thought of an elf right then. I don't know. Um, but just have a conversation for just, a, just for a few seconds. Just have a conversation. What do you want to say to me? Because he cares for you. Now with the head still bowed, was that hard? Maybe a little awkward at first because you haven't talked to God, you really maybe didn't know what to say, but he already knows your heart. He loves you. He has a purpose for you. He wants you to walk in freedom, not bondage. He wants you to be set free. So knowing that, then why would I not just have a conversation with him? And maybe for you, the Lord's been working in your life at any of our locations or watching online. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you're no longer gonna believe the lie of the enemy. You're gonna give your life to Jesus. No matter what's happened in your past, today you're gonna su su submit to him, repent of your sin, and give your life to Jesus. You can do that right where you sit today. Just cry out to him, talk to him. Remember, prayer doesn't save you, but my lips can, 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 can say what my heart declares. If my heart declares it, my lips can proclaim it. To say, Jesus, I believe you came for me. Jesus, I believe you died for me. 
And as best as I know how, right now, Jesus, I surrender and give my life to you. Jesus, you said if I confess my sins, you'll forgive me. And today I confess my sin and repent of my sin. Thank you for forgiving me. Now listen, if that's you at any of our locations, host or your campus pastor will come out just in a moment and they're gonna share with you what your next steps can be. We wanna follow with you with your next steps. We wanna help you take your steps in following Jesus. Father, thank you for your, for your word. God, thank you that <laughs> there's no right way or wrong way that we can approach you and talk to you. That God, because you're your son, Jesus, we have access to you. And we're so thankful. God, help us to learn your promises, including myself, thousands upon thousands. So that, Lord, when we, we can claim your promises, because you are true and you're faithful and you're good. Thank you this morning for saving people. Thank you this morning for encouraging us to have a conversation with you. We'll always give you all the glory and all the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen.